Hi there everyone, it's me, Michael, your friendly neighborhood humble stroke assaulter. So, I'm going to set this video to upload about 10.10 or 10.15 in the morning on the 21st of June. That will then officially be my new second birthday, 24 months since the stroke. So, bye crash. So, um, yeah, it'll, it'll be 24 months. It's a bit... A bit raw I'll be quite honest um, it's a bit it is a bit emotional because that's a day that is a, a benchmark that you can't ever change uh, some of the stroke groups I belong to people say hey well how far are you since your stroke oh I'm 24 months do you have any mobility problems yeah occasionally do you have any speech problems oh yeah from time to time my aphasia my anomia they still they'll they'll probably follow me for the rest of my life I still have sound sensitivity. I still have light sensitivity to fluorescent or strobe lights. Um, I still have some mental health issues that I'm working through. Um, there are still pieces of debris that need to be cleaned up, so to speak. And some of it just needs to be neatly stacked, and I'm going to have that um, difficulty for a while. I'm hoping not a forever while, but for a for a while. I don't know how long that'll be. So... Let's just catch up. So I accidentally realized I just forgot to upload and continue the upload of my 23 month after stroke. So I just did that now. So that's why you're seeing it today on the 19th. So since I've spoken to you fine people, um, I have had a lot of interesting things. So I have went down to Toronto in March for a two-day neuropsychiatric neuropsychological assessment. I've actually finally got the file on that. It's an interesting read. It was a difficult read. Um, I still working through the Ontario WSIB system. That's still ongoing. Uh, um, I now have uh, a occupational therapist that's helping me with return to work goals. Um, I will not be returning more likely to the place where I had the stroke. Um, I'll be looking for a job somewhere else. I don't even know what that's going to look like. That's a bit surreal. Um, and because of the COVID, it sort of limits celebration options. Because I had planned on having friends uh, down to a park nearby me so we could sit outside, barbecue hamburgers, eat some cake, drink some pop, whatever. Unfortunately, that won't happen because of COVID will restrict that. Um, and I'm, I don't feel so self-centered as to put people at risk just to come and celebrate two years of not dying. <laughs> kind of funny when you put it that way. <clears throat> two years after a stroke. I, I've recovered some memories of that day, so to speak. Um, I know some of them are... Constructed memories, memories that are sort of collided together of the recollections of other people around me. Um, I do have some honest, genuine memories of that day. Still probably the scariest day in my entire world. Um, there are day, there have been occasions where I can remember lying on the floor at work and smelling the carpet cleaner and, and feeling just absolutely helpless. Like, I'm, to go from standing up erect to lying on the floor, um, it's a day that, unfortunately, I'll probably never forget as much as I'd like to. And there'll probably eventually be more memories flood back in. So, I just hope the ones I get are honest memories and not constructive memories. So, in two years, I've gone from lying on the floor into an emergency room and to the which was also the nearest neurotrauma center to being given TPA to the ICU unit eventually to home through physiotherapy occupational therapy speech therapy 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 and then some more therapy in various forms and functions to um my family doctor that I had initially after the stroke was useless. Just absolutely 100% useless. Um, he didn't understand stroke. He didn't understand young stroke. 
He had, in my estimation, almost no comprehension of mental health. <clears throat> um, to a return to work that was fraught with issues, to me going back on a leave of absence six months after my return to work, to right now being off of work almost a year. That sucks. To no end, that sucks. Um, to uh, more mental health interventions because of uh, the outcomes of the stroke and whatnot, to now seeing an occupational therapist to help with my return to work journey. Um, this last year has not been easy in, in any sense. Um, in fact, in some respects, the first year after the stroke was easier. Nobody it was. Uh, part of that would be because you didn't have to socially regulate and socially isolate. I could go just do things. Um, this time last year, my girlfriend and I would have been transitioning from Montreal. Or this would have been our last day in Montreal, going to Fredericton. <clears throat> so she could graduate from her master's program. Um, and then we were moving on to Halifax for a couple days and then coming home. Um, so we were able to do things. There was some celebratory kind of sense in regards to what was going to happen on the 21st. This year, it's you're limited. Your options are truly limited. So um, I will, we will probably get a cake and put a big number two on it and light it on fire. Then we will inhale said cake. Um, or I'll have a reasonably portioned piece of cake and then have another reasonably portioned piece of cake. <clears throat> last, the last, the first six months after my stroke, <clears throat> I spent at home uh, going to various therapy and rehab appointments. The next six months I spent going to work. That had its own unique difficulties. Um, the first, the first six months I had a lot of neuro fatigue, um, like a lot of neurological fatigue, a lot of what is called post-stroke fatigue. Uh, going back to work, there was a lot of post-stroke anxiety. Uh, I would be very fatigued after a day at work. Um, then in the 18-month stretch, so from month 12 to 18, again, I had a lot of neuro fatigue. There were some other issues in play, um, mental health-wise, so to speak. Uh, and then the neurological fatigue finally started to dissipate in about the 18 month mark, so to speak. I don't, I didn't actually keep a diary of like today. I don't have neurological fatigue, but the neurological fatigue over time did subside. The neurological fatigue over the time between 12 to 18 months become, uh, in some instances more predictable. In other instances, I learned how to manage it better. In other instances, I learned what my triggers could be or would be. So that goes back to managing it better. Um, in other instances, I, I wouldn't try to just tough it out and like suck it up. And, and, and I would like, nope, I'm done. And, and I would just regulate myself a little bit better. Uh, so the neuro fatigue still does happen, but it's not as often. It's not as debilitating. Um, I still can have neuro fatigue. The biggest time I have neuro fatigue currently is after any kind of therapy session. Like if I go to see, if I speak to my therapist or my OT, I can be really drained um, emotionally, mentally, neurologically. So usually the rest of that day may be a write off, and sometimes the next day also may be a write off. Um, physically, let's just talk some of the physical physical abilities because Steve. One of my gunner meets in England, uh, you keep wondering, hey, like, because you're recently just past your first birthday and congratulations, you didn't die. Um, so I had a left brain stroke, which means my right side was impacted. Um, I believe you're the reverse of me. Um, I had a moderate stroke with rather rapid intervention. So I have right side foot drop. I still am impacted with foot drop to this day. I have just learned um, compensation skills. If I get really overly stimulated and not in a good way or overly tired, again, not in a good way, um, 
or fatigued, not in a good way, um, I will start to lean towards my right side uh, and I will start to have foot drop. So again, you do the physical therapy either in the hospital or in post-hospital rehab and that only covers so much because they get you to a benchmark of functionality. Um, and then they do some testing and you graduate out because you've gone beyond their testing. Um, so March, Marchish, Aprilish, end of March, beginning of April. Um, I had purchased a new day bag uh, and I wanted to get in a better state of physical fitness. The one hobby I engage in requires a lot of walking, a little bit of running, uh, walking distances with weight, like weighted garments on, uh, web gear, belt kit, uh, a, a chest rig, a small day pack, or possibly even a full ruck. So I tried to go up playing airsoft after my stroke, the summer after my stroke, um, and I was a shit show. Right? I wasn't picking my feet up right. I was still dragging my feet. I was easily fatigued. Um, I was doing that to prove it to me that I could still be functional. Uh, last summer, I got it a couple of times, but again, didn't have the same level of fitness. Um, didn't have the same level of balance. So I still had some issues last summer. So COVID happens and I'm like, well, if I can't go to the gym, I got to do something. So I started out doing 5K with a 20 pound rucksack. Um, and then I did that for two weeks and moved it up to 6K uh, with a 30 pound rucksack. And then to 7K with a 40 pound rucksack. And then on to 8K. Um, one time this past week, um, actually I believe, yeah it was actually, it was on my the anniversary of my stroke, my second birthday. I did 5K in the morning with 40 pounds, and then I did 5K in the evening with 40 pounds, and I'm able to consistently do five kilometers with a 40 pound backpack in 56 minutes. Um, I can do 8K and, or an hour and 30, hour and 29. So I'm, I'm, I'm well below the 12 minute per kilometer benchmark, which was kind of the, the benchmark I was setting. Um, and, and I knew there was a possibility I couldn't reach that. I knew there was a possibility that this could just be a series of really bad life choices. Um, but it has increased my endurance. Uh, it has increased my balance. My walking is stronger. My walking is faster. Um, I still have some more targets and benchmarks I want to meet. But again, with that physical fitness goal, I wasn't worried about the time, right? Again, stroke recovery after you get a certain point, it's not about how long will it take to get to X. It's will you get to X? Um, what do you plan to do to get to X? And you go, right? So again, I, I figured, okay, we're just going to see if this is going to be a bad life choice or not. And I just did it. Um, my girlfriend looked at me with the kind of the raised eyebrow, like you're a crazy man. I'm like, yep, I know I have a psychiatrist, so I'm a crazy man. So <laughs> bad mental health joke. I know. So I put the rucksack on, I did my 5k, I did what did it with 20 pounds. And I was a mess. Um, I, I was exhausting. It was fatiguing. I didn't have the cardio fitness. Um, I, you know, my feet were wobbly. But you know what? I did it. And I didn't have a heart attack or another stroke doing it. So I went and did it the next day. And I did that every day for six days a week for two weeks. And then at the end of the two weeks, I'm like, okay, so I'm going to try it today with, with 30 pounds and 6K. And again, it was a mess. And it it wasn't until I got to about a month and a half in, I started to notice gains. I started to notice things were easier. My times were coming down. My distances were my distances were lengthening. My the amount of weight I was carrying was increasing. So for those of you that are going through stroke recovery and you're worried about how long will it take until comma fill in the blank, don't worry set the goal, right? State your goal. I want to whatever, right? Then go consult your clinical team, consult your physio, your occupational, um, neuropsychological, neuropsychiatric, neurologist, family doctor, social worker, whatever that team looks like. You, you go and consult your team and say, hey, I want to do this, right? 
And I realize for some of us, some of the goals we have or some things we want to get back to, you may never be able to do again. Um, I used to really enjoy roller coasters. Now, I'm going to probably say all bets are off. Um, you know, so like a Disneyland environment or a Canada's Wonderland environment, that's probably something I will never do again. Um, and that's just a reality of things. Um, if I can get to that, so what? But it's, it's not really on my list of priorities. And again, when it comes to your recovery goals, they got to be your goals. What are you, what are your list of priorities to do? Um, and then just work towards it uh, with a little bit of reality that some of these things are a little bit outside your control because your brain and your body still on occasion may not want to get along well. And there's nothing you can do about it. There, there's nothing wrong with that. The reality is your stroke has impacted your brain. Your stroke has impacted the way your brain and your body get along. And certain things are just going to be difficult. And that sucks. That it just it just it just sucks. I, I don't know a better word to come up with than that because it's not the aphasia, it's not my own. It's just I can't find a more descriptive word than it's shitty, right? So for those of you that weren't worrying about your mobility goals, um, or your balance goals, or maybe your language goals, all I can suggest, I'm gonna take a sip here. generate <clears throat> some kind of routine stick to the routine practice your skills reinforce your successes reinvent new strategies to get around your hurdles and then keep reinforcing your successes so you're not you're not emphasizing time you're emphasizing the target right because when you look at it in a time perspective, you might just arbitrarily say, well, this will take six weeks. Okay, well, what did you make that benchmark on? Right? I'm not a neurologist. Are you a neurologist? Are you a neurologist that's had a stroke? Or a, a, a um, PhD type brain doctor that's had a stroke? Uh, or even just a doctor that's had a stroke? Um, you know, like even, even if you were an occupational therapist that specialized with neurological injuries, could you conceivably give yourself a realistic time and date like this will take six weeks or I will accomplish this by the 31st of August or whatever probably not so some of your recovery is dependent on the effort you put into it <clears throat> and I'm not saying if you don't put effort in you're not going to recover I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that at certain points the gains you are going to make are, are a direct result of and I don't mean to make this sound belittling, but they're a direct result of how much energy you put in to focusing on your recovery. And for those of you that are post-stroke, that are in a situation you completely hate, like you need to use a walker or a cane, or you're in a wheelchair, um, and, and there are limited medical opinions on how well things will get. I, I know that sucks. Um, not from personal experience, but from watching my grandmother after her stroke. I've, I've seen what that looks like, and I know how devastating that can be for someone's lifestyle and their manner, manner of life. I get that. But for those of us that are willing to make the effort, for those of us that are willing to put yourself out there, for those of you that are willing to stand up, quote-unquote, because I realize some of you can't stand. Um, dust yourself off and carry on. Like, don't bitch, just crack on and get the job done kind of thing. Um, unfortunately, that's the attitude you're going to have to take. And I realize there's days where, like, stairs are a nightmare, or getting into the shower could turn into the slip and slide of death, or putting on shoes and socks is, like, the end of your world. Because I still, to this day, have occasion to ask someone to help me tie or untie a shoe. And that's humbling. It's it's absolutely it just it just strips you. But that's not to say that you cannot have a life after your stroke. That is not to say you cannot enjoy your life after your stroke. You may not enjoy it the same way. I understand that. I understand that more than some people would understand. <clears throat> I understand that 
<clears throat> the way you have to navigate your world, the way you may have to interact with your world, the way the world interacts with you, they've 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 a rep, a rev, changed forever. Um, and there's nothing anyone can do about that. That's it's just reality, right? There's nothing anyone can do about that, except for you, right? You have to advocate for yourself. You have to educate the people around you. You have to educate yourself, <clears throat> and you just have to persevere. That's it. Just persevere. Um, there will be shitty days. There'll be beautiful days. But the most important thing is that there will be days and more days and days after that and days after that and days after that. So it's my second birthday. Um, for those of you that know, you know me personally, um, you are obligated for a second birthday gift. So the second birthday is my unofficial second birthday, which is now my official second birthday, and my actual statutory birthday is also present. So for those of you that know me personally, you can just give the gifts to me. Um, and for those of you that don't, you're not obligated to send me anything. Of course, you wouldn't know where to anyways, because I don't have a post office box. Moving on. So for those of you that have been enjoying watching what you've been watching on my channel for the past 24 months, uh, please like, share, subscribe. For those of you that know someone that's gone through a stroke, they're recovering from a stroke or a brain injury, or supporting someone that's gone through a stroke or a brain injury, please point the channel out to them. They may get some benefit out of the content I generate. And if you happen to see either in yourself or someone around you the signs and symptoms of a stroke, someone that appears to be immediately befuddled or confused or lost their sense of balance, someone appears to have vision problems, they can't see out of one eye, they can't move their eyes in a certain direction, they only see in grayscale, they don't see in color, they see a little dot in the world. So when it's facial droop, there's a noticeable slackening of the facial muscles, one side or the other, possibly both. Um, someone who can't raise both arms equally effectively or at all. Someone who can't smile equally effectively or at all. Someone has slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate language for situation or context. You cannot understand speech. It sounds like the, the, the teacher off the peanuts. Right? Um, you uh, have the inability to stand unaided. General body weakness, weakness on one side. Please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.